my style for veggie trays is to go as natural as possible. I want my veggie tray to look like I walked out into the garden and like moved a leaf over and like pulled the thing out of the earth. The veggie platter is my assignment for dinner tonight and I thought it was a great opportunity just to talk to you about how I make a crudité or a raw veggie platter, what I include, unusual items that I include, and why you might want to make one like these. I feel like bringing a veggie tray is a really wonderful gift to bring to someone's home when there's a potluck. It's healthy, especially when you're trying to watch what you eat over the holidays. You can fill it with all kinds of goodness, and it's also a really beautiful and wonderful creative process that you can share with your children if you have kids at home with you. Yesterday, I actually walked to the grocery store. I walked to the grocery store because it's so crazy right now that I did not want to get in a car accident in the parking lot. I've gotten out a basket here out of my garage. What I like to do is I like to line it with tin foil or plastic wrap so that water does not seep through onto the coffee table below it. And then my MO when styling a veggie tray is to have it just be luscious and layers and overflowing and colors and all kinds of contrast and really appealing and inviting. I think it's a really healthy and wonderful thing to present when children are around so that they can make good choices and really get their vegetables and nutrients in and be drawn to it. The next thing is, is that I really try to create a base and use natural materials. So really like the only thing that's unnatural might be one layer of foil at the bottom. Then I went into my garden and I happened to grow Swiss chard. It's very productive. I clipped a few leaves that I might line my platter in. Um, you can buy Swiss chard for like 99 cents a bunch at the market. I also bought at the market um, because they were really the best looking. I got the whole carrots with the tops, including some colorful ones. I intend to rinse these tops and lay them at the bottom of my veggie platter as a bushy, um, textural, kind of beautiful element. And it also is going to boost up. So when you put greens on the bottom of your platter, it's going to give you that height. You can also use things like um, grape leaves if you have a grape leaf vine, or lemon leaves if you have a citrus tree. And those are great under a veggie platter or cheese platter. In terms of eating the rainbow and showing the rainbow of colors on your vegetable platter, I think that's really important, unless you're doing a monochromatic platter, which can also be fun. You can do like all green or all purple or all red. Um, but for today, we're doing a rainbow. So in the category of the greens, I'm gonna have a green base with my soft carrot tops and my Swiss chard leaves. I like that these have a little bit of color that picks up other tones in my vegetables. We have other greens like beans, oh there's broccoli in here, asparagus that I will blanch, green beans, cucumber, and then we have our reds, our oranges, our yellow peppers, yellow squash, beautiful yellow pale white endive. You can also get the radicchio um, that is the red and white version that's gorgeous. Here we continue with more colors with our tomatoes. You can get the heirlooms that are all different rainbow colors. And then I really like to have a pop of white. My white is in the form of these um, beautiful button mushrooms. They're cheap, they're delicious, they're very healthy for you. You can also do something like jicama. You can get white carrots or parsnips. So think about those like odd colors that may not even be a color like white and be sure to include that on your platter. And I think it's really a lot of fun. Also cutting your radishes in half can be really beautiful, that contrasty color. This same philosophy applies if you're doing a fruit platter. So if you can just approach this like an Archimbaldo painting where like people's faces are made out of vegetables. I love Archimbaldo. I always share him with my children and I kind of channel him when I'm doing my veggie tray. So we're going to be blanching or doing a quick boil on the potatoes today. I also have green beans that were on a great sale. My green beans are going to get a quick blanch as is this asparagus. So a little bit of cooked, a little bit of raw. The asparagus and the green beans get thrown into an ice water bath to stop their cooking. They get bright green and they stay crispy. Belgian endive is really great, especially if you have like a delicious chunky dip. This is a wonderful little cup 
colder and you just rinse and cut those leaves and separate them. They're also very turkey-like and sculptural, so I feel like they give great looks on a veggie tray. You can include a child in the washing and trimming and peeling, and that's a great lesson to do with a child if you have a willing kid with you. Um, it's a good life skill. And if I don't have the patience for that, then what I do is I sort of wash and chop and dry and get everything ready, and then your kids can help with the creative element of making a veggie tray, which is arranging the colors, figuring out contrast, doing the sort of engineering of getting it all to fit in, mounding things up. In short, you know, when all the eating is kind of overdone and everything is a high calorie food, I think that doing a veggie tray is a really like noble endeavor and one that you should try if you haven't before. I think it's one of my favorite things to take as a real showstopper to someone's event or party and it's a way to sort of trim the calories and fill up on something really healthful. Take care and I hope you have a really happy holiday. Be well.